Welcome everyone to Get Ready for the Storm, Remote Event Storming in Action by Karan Rai and Giovanni Asproni and Deepti Rai. Without further delay, over to you. Welcome to the Remote Event Storming session. I'm Karan uh, and Giovanni and Deepti, uh, I, have, I have them with me as my colleagues. So uh, we're not going to uh, bother you with introductions or save you that time. Uh, you can read about us from our profiles or on LinkedIn and on, on Agile India's uh, pages. And we'll take you straight to what you've come here for, uh, which is to event strong. Uh, so our goal for the next uh, one hour is uh, to introduce you to event storming and its core concepts. Uh, and help you get comfortable with the process so that you can also apply it with your teams and organizations. It's an, it's an emerging uh, methodology to, uh, to discover domains. Uh, and then it's a great exercise to arrive at a common point uh, of understanding between different stakeholders. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll take you through only the core concepts um, and then, then we'll practice it together. Yeah, maybe one slide, thing to add it. Yes, just a little thing that we won't go in full depth in everything. The, the, what we want to achieve here is to give you enough knowledge so you can get started and, you know, go in more depth by yourself. Yeah. Yeah, so this is how we plan to achieve it. Uh, we'll start by spending a little bit of time on the history and core concepts uh, and application areas. Uh, there aren't many core concepts, so it's very easy to adopt, and that's why this approach is really easy. We will then introduce uh, an interesting business case, uh, and we'll practice event storming together. The concepts that, you, that we will explain in the first 15 minutes should be sufficient to help you get started. And as you work through the event storming workshop, we will also help and guide you through the process and explain detailed concepts as you come across them. So so that you can understand them in a more contextual setting. Finally, after the event storming, we will regroup uh, to discuss our key learnings and reflect on how we can build on what we have learned. Uh, we will also share links and resources so that you can refer them um, and continue to, uh, to your research and understand the topic better. So let's start with learning more about event storming and I'll hand over to Gio to take you through the core concepts. Okay, so as you can see from the slides, is a workshop uh, style technique uh, to bring stakeholders together to explore complex business domains, which means in, in practice, bringing people together that maybe know a system or need to create a system so they can talk and uh, somehow share their knowledge and realize a common view of what the system is or the domain is, yeah? Was invented by Alberto Brandolini in 2012. Um, and, and a very important aim for the technique is actually for these stakeholders to reach uh, some form of uh, common understanding. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll give you examples of this as we, as we proceed. One, you know, this is how an in-person one would look. This is a very small one. So uh, you don't see any people, imagine people here talking and debating and attaching notes there. And what you uh, don't see in the board, but is important for the event storm, there is a timeline underlined this. So from left to right is how things happen in a, in a timeline, yeah? So events, in fact, is things that happen to the system or things that the system does, yeah? Uh, there are many application areas. So some uh, understanding business processes, so let's say in a big company, things get done. There are maybe silos doing bits, parts of, of the process and nobody knows the, the process in its entirety and, and they want to change it to make it more streamlined. In those streamlined, in those situations, stakeholders from the different silos can go to a room or a virtual one if it is remote and start using vent storming to uh, put what they know about the system. So, and discuss that and sometimes debate or reach or find disagreements and then reach to a point where everybody has actually the same view of what is actually happening. Yeah, so because from that point on, you can, you know how to streamline the system, for example, or you can decide what actions to take to make it better, yeah? But it's also discovery for new systems and applications. So, you know, this is something we do uh, at Launch Ventures with, uh, for example, startups, people with a great idea, but they don't are quite 
unsure about you know how to proceed so they have the general abstract idea but it's like there is a need of more detail to do uh, things and so the event storming is a great way of exploring more details and, and uh, get a better understanding of what to do and also model complex systems and interactions as well any kind of system and uh, one thing that needs to be uh, said is also it comes from the domain-driven design uh, community. Alberto is part of that community. And so somehow some of the, well, many of the concepts are basically a mapping into sticky notes of domain-driven design ideas. Yeah. The core concept uh, the, is the concept of event. Yeah. An event is uh, an event that is relevant for the domain expert and contextual for the domain that is being explored. Contextual for the domain means makes sense in that particular domain. It's not something that necessarily makes sense in more than one domain. We will see some examples about that. And this an event is a verb at the past tense. You know, something happened. This is to give you to put uh, to help put in focus in in uh, in the system in the way in a way that makes some sort of sense. So the system has done this. Then what happens next is that. Let's see. Uh, start with a tiny example. So let's say some invoicing system that does some invoicing at the end of each month. So in some way, the end of the month process has been started. There is a billable amount calculated and then it's verified. And after that, the invoice is prepared, something like this. But then also you notice the orange nodes are the events. There are these red ones that are called hotspots in uh, these kind of nodes. And these ones are about comments, disagreements, so you say, while you do this, you, some people say, hold on, I, we know that calculating this is really, you know, nobody really knows how to do that. They'll put a note there. Billable amount, well, this is a very long process. It takes ages, so, and put a comment there. These are actually very interesting because this could be, spark conversations with, maybe there is somebody in the room that actually knows how those things work. And so there could be further exploration of the system to, to improve the situation, yeah? Uh, of course, you can start like this, but then you can go and add more and more details. So don't be scared by, by what you see here. Okay, this is exactly what it was before, but with more details. So say this yellow note is actually a person that told that does something in the system, pushes a button and starts the EOD process. So basically says, goes to the end of, uh, sorry, EOD, EO, EOM, I should have put end of month process. So maybe pushes a button and the end of month process starts. This one, depending on, has a policy on to decide which invoices, which bills to do the process. So the policy something says, when this happens, do that, or is, is an if then, basically, yeah? It's, it's to give more refinement. So in this way, you can have more depth into the exploration of the process. And then of course, there is another system that is the billing system that what it does, calculates that. And then the green note is data, that is the result of the calculation that is given to input to the other process that is verifying the billable amount, yeah? So you see, it's the same thing exactly as before, but with a bit more detail. The emphasis here is you don't need, when you do event storming, to try to do precisely each step, very defined and go on. You can go in broad strokes, say, okay, this is more or less very high level what it does. Now let's add more details in the parts in which we are really interested in, yeah? So you can go with successive refinements if you like, yeah. Uh, there are some key concepts. So uh, let's not spend too much time on this right now. We'll use this uh, during the, um, the workshop. But basically, as you can see, other, some concepts we already seen, there is the, domain, the event, there is an actor that is basically a person or people in general, even a group of them. A system is an automated one, could be an IT system, could be, you know, a, something running on AWS, could be a conveyor belt bringing goods from place A to place B. A policy, as I said before, you know, whenever X happens, we do Y. Yeah, so it's, it's basically a conditional. Command, decision, action, intent. So uh, you saw this before, the person starts the end of month uh, process, issues a command to the system that starts the process, yeah? The read model is about data. So events may actually create data that can be read by other events to perform the next steps. Aggregate, let's not spend too much time on this. This is a, a slightly more advanced concept. 
uh, I don't know if we'll manage to uh, reach this during the workshop or not, but we'll see at a later point if needed. And then the hotspots, this is actually very interesting is every time there is a comment and uncertainty, something, even a conflict, a disagreement, taking these notes and putting them in the appropriate place is extremely useful for further exploration and discussion, yeah? Uh, the concepts are linked in this way. So it kind of an actor invokes a command, for example, that is invoked on a system. A policy can invoke a command, basically, you know, when this happens, do this. Now, this is as a reference. This, uh, this reference will be useful uh, maybe also during the workshop, yeah? So uh, later on, when we start the workshop, we can answer all questions about this and help you out if, if there are any problems, yeah? But it's basically an idea on how things connect together. Uh, the remote event storm. Now, this is what the remote event storm looks like. This is from a real one. Uh, we've done a launch ventures. It's like the in-person one, but instead of having a whiteboard, we, have a, we use mirror boards, could be any other electronic board you have. It's pretty much the same. Now, and the only thing that we added here that you will you would use also on the in-person is the ubiquitous language. It's an important concept that is about when you discuss concepts and putting an event storm is important to be on the same page. So it's important to avoid using different terms for exactly the same concept because this will cause confusion. So every time there is a new important concept is worth actually adding that to the language and agree with the, the other participants what the meaning is. So everybody will actually understand what is being talked about. Yeah, this is extremely important and this will be very useful uh, as well, of course, in the workshop. There are a few things to be said about the difference between, you know, being in the same room or being remote. Of course, in the same room is the interaction is more natural, if you like, you know. Uh, that also, there are situations where there are multiple parallel conversations or the tools are lower friction. Everybody knows how to use sticky notes and, and markers. Uh, there are also some side effects of team building, you know, and there are many things that are actually quite good of, about being in the same room uh, that we don't have in a remote setting. But on the other hand, when in a remote setting, there are other advantages. So, of course, we miss the side conversations are very difficult and uh, somehow can feel a bit more distant and often is also more tiring. Being on the screen for a few hours can be really, really tiring as probably all of us know. But on the other, the other end, there, are, there is unlimited wall space. So with uh, event, storming, event storming, you may need a big room if you are in, a, in an office with a lot of wall space and lots of sticky notes and markers. So we don't have these limitations with the remote part, which means can make things a bit easier to organize from this point of view. You know, you have unlimited nodes, there is no need for markets and the unlimited wall space, yeah? Uh, of course, there is an aspect of learning using the tools, like if you're using Miro, I never done that uh, before, uh, this could be, uh, you know, you need to spend some time learning that. Uh, the side conversations are much more difficult. You know, we are all in the same Zoom call and there is difficult to be, you know, in a smaller group talking. So uh, this aspect is a bit problematic and needs more deliberate facilitation as well. Uh, there is a, so because of the disadvantages, there is the need for the facilitators to be more present and, and more active. On the other hand, a big advantage, and this is one of the reasons why we use this uh, at Launch Ventures. And I have to say, we used that this before remote event storming was even a thing, well before COVID times. But for these specific reasons, that is no need to travel. So we have international customers. We have uh, the core of our team is based in India, but you have customers pretty much everywhere. And you know, uh, having to travel for an event storming session from India to the US or uh, to Europe or somewhere else can be expensive and also problematic to, to organize, you know, organizing the rooms, hotels, everything. And so this uh, for us was the, one of the big reasons why we use the technique. And we think that still with the, even with the disadvantages we talk about is still uh, an, an extremely useful technique to, uh, to use. Yeah, and yeah, I'm done with this and maybe Karan, that okay. is the workshop. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Well, I hope that uh, 
provided a quick overview uh, of events from, of course, you know, Geo covered quite a few things uh, in the interest of time, you know, trying to uh, capture at least the core concepts as quickly as we could, but uh, don't, don't feel intimidated if it's too much. Uh, all we need to really know to get started is the event, uh, because that's the common interface for all stakeholders. Everybody understands events. So uh, for this workshop, we thought about uh, picking uh, a use case, a business case, uh, which everybody hopefully is familiar with uh, and someone everywhere, everybody has been missing quite a bit being able to travel. So we thought, how about uh, coming up with a business idea? So let's assume all of us are entrepreneurs and we are, or we are part of an executive team, uh, which is coming up with this new business concept of a holiday planning service. So it's a travel agency which provides end-to-end -end travel management, uh, everything from helping people plan their itineraries to managing their bookings. Uh, there, are, there are various aspects in this business now, as you can imagine, uh, that would happen. So we would help, uh, we would understand uh, our customers' requirements, their preferences, uh, their travel dates, we'll select destinations for them matching their preferences, we'll match their budgets, uh, we could prepare day-wise itineraries, and finally we help them book their travels, stays, transfers. So the scope is basically endless, it's up to us how much we want to provide in this service. Um, the goal of this exercise is to explore these business processes as a whole, and identify opportunities, risks, and ideas uh, that will help us provide a great service. So think of it, as I said, as your business uh, that you plan to start and what are the different processes that you will have to model if you had to provide uh, a service like this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sure. Maybe please uh, join the board now. So I'll stop sharing now. I'll tell you what, what will happen uh, next. So we'll split in a few rooms. How many of us are here? I need to create the rooms. So is uh, I can't see. So 17 participants, including us. So it's like uh, 14. Uh, sorry, including the um, the, the co-host. No. We we are 17, which means is 12 people. Yeah, 12 attendees. Um, I also so, would like to join one of the rooms. Yeah, but, okay, yes. so I was saying, well, I, maybe we can just go in two rooms, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll create two rooms now. Let me also uh, do something else here. So if you yeah. you can start exploring the board, please join there. Uh, so while you create the rooms here, I can just give a quick- uh, Yes, maybe, please. Uh, a quick- uh, reference tutorial of how to use Miro effectively. Okay. So I'll create the rooms and add the frame for the second team. Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. I'll just share my screen and uh, take everyone through a few notes here. Okay, so this is how Miro looks like. I hope everyone's uh, I'm logged in using the Miro app, but you could be logged in using the browser. Uh, you should be able to see the same view. And you can see that you have our slides here. So there is a quick guide here. So generally for event storming, it's helpful if you have an external keyboard, mouse, and monitor. Uh, but if you don't, that's okay. You can still work through. Uh, these are just a few sh shortcuts for you to... Uh, work through so that makes your makes your work easier and you can focus more on the events from rather than the two. Uh, so adding a sticky note, that's really what you need to do. Uh, so adding a sticky note is super easy. So you can just press the letter N and it pops up this menu and you just press uh, the click on wherever you want to add that note and start typing. Right. Now, if you want to copy over this event, that's generally a lot easier than creating a new sticky note every time. So all you need to do is command or control D and it just puts another sticky note right next to it uh, in a sort of sequence, which makes it easy uh, to also progress with events. And you just start typing. And that's how you can just continue to, so I'm, all I'm doing is doing command D 
because I have a Mac, or you could do Control D if you have Windows, uh, and you can continue to add events. To change color, just select one uh, sticky note, change the color, and then if you again do Control D, it just continues to put sticky notes in that same color. So that's a simple. That, that's all you really need to know. Um, if you want to scroll through, you'll probably figure out yourself. But uh, if you need to refer this, uh, you can just scroll with your mouse across the board. If you press your left click and scroll, it will help you uh, zoom in. And yeah, that's uh, that's really it. That's on the shortcut. So we have a practice area if you want to just try placing a few events. So we have a practice area where you can spend the next two to three minutes trying to place sticky notes. And I can actually uh, help you. Um, I mean, I can guide you whether you know it's it's whether you need any help or if you're facing any challenges. So in this practice area, you can zoom in and I'll just add my first note and create an event, let's say any event. So event storm started. Just to remind you, um, try to keep your events in the past tense. There's a reason for that. Uh, stating your events in the past tense makes it more factual, more deterministic. And there is less ambiguity around it. So it also helps you think about events in a way that uh, they are more deterministic. So yeah, just go ahead and fire away. So start adding a few events here once you feel comfortable. And once Stu has set up, Giovanni has set up the rooms, we can yeah. start. Um, I would say whoever ends up in room one goes to frame one and room two, frame two. Can I ask also you something? Is in the, in the event storming is important to see each other. So if you can switch the cameras on, that will be really useful for the exercise. Yeah, this is one of, of the things as well. Okay. Let me, have, have we got one participant that just joined? Anyway, I'll create the rooms now. So I'll open, I'm opening the rooms. There will be DPT in one and uh, Karan in the other. Uh, I'm, I see the number of participants seems to be increasing. So let me do something else. Maybe Karan share again the, the link to Miro uh, in yeah. the chat because the new joiners won't have seen that. Uh, I'll recreate uh, the rooms again. So to include the new participants. And see. Yeah, yeah, so I said, who ends up in room one, uh, frame one in middle, room two, frame two, and please switch the cameras on. I'm opening the rooms now. Okay. Okay. So reflections. I think if you look at the board now, let me let me share also my screen. But you look at the board because you'll have to use it. To let me share the screen so I can explain more easily. Uh, so uh, now, can you see I, my 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 sorry my screen? Yeah. Now yes. Yes. for this particular space, yeah, with the reflections area. So to give you where it is, it's just under the slides. So if you are on your frame, on your uh, event storm, go up and left. This is a bit of orientation. And so maybe let's spend uh, on this a couple of minutes adding stickers on what you like compared how you work, you know, even storming, what, what you like and what you don't compare to what uh, you do now. Uh, yeah. And maybe even comments if you like. Okay. So, and then we can talk a bit. Uh, about the workshop experience and what you think about the, the technique. So I think, let me see if I can set a timer to give everybody, is there a timer in this, you know, maybe Karan, maybe you need to set the timer. I think you are the, the owner of the board. You must have more, more permissions. 
if you set yeah. a two minutes timer so people can add their own reflections yeah no worries i'm tracking it so i'll just remind yeah. everyone okay so what you like what you dislike and if you want to break the rules and put also some general comments or opinions i will allow you to do that i'm italian the laws are there as a general suggestion not to to be respected Italians must be really agile to you. <laughs> also, feel free to copy some of those notes, you know, and paste as well. Don't you, so don't don't look at those blue and red uh, sticky notes as the only places where to write. You can copy and add more. Yeah, don't feel limited by that. So, Johnny and Karan, I mean, where can I find more, um, uh, uh, you know, things to read more on this? So, yes, look to... on my screen, there is a slide with the references there. Oh, yeah? great. Yeah, Some great. references. So, one thing that we'll do is we'll export the entire workshop board and make it available to you all. Yeah. Great. Okay. Be great. So, hopefully, we'll, uh, we'll be useful. Yeah, and this this will also contain something related to how to run the workshop. Uh, so I, I don't think, think we could. Yeah. Go on, Karan, go on. Yeah, sorry. If you take, if you see the slide just before this in references, this is one below references. There is a reference plan. So um, this is a general guide that we we've sort of found useful, and it also. Uh, borrows from guidance that uh, Alberto, who's the, who started this uh, methodology, uh, had suggested. So you can look at this, and I can take you quickly through this. Uh, so we started with an initial event. Some of it you'll be able to relate to. We then perform an event storm. We do an explicit walkthrough. Once the event storm is completed, we verify whether the events are consistent and there aren't any which we're missing. And then we try and narrate backwards. What narrate, narrating backwards means is we look at an event, for instance, payment uh, completed. And we look at events that are essential to ensure that this event, we can arrive up to this event. So we kind of go backwards and see, oh, for payment completed, did we have a corresponding event which led to this point? Or did we have it? So, so that's what we do. And then we have value stickies where we can, this is the extension where we add sticky notes, which indicate what are the points in the event storm where we are generating value and we are taking away value. What are more what are less efficient approaches, more efficient ways of doing things. And then we have arrow voting where we look at uh, hotspots and we, we align on what are the most important hotspots to address first. So everybody does uh, a simple arrow based voting. So they put arrows on the hotspots that they feel are most important. And then the ones the hotspots which have the maximum arrows, we go to those and start discussing those. And then finally, from there, we, we have an emergent domain model that starts emerging and it's a, so we also have a guideline. Sorry, Gio, you're, you're on mute, were you? Was, I muted myself and then I started talking. Maybe it was a good thing that I muted myself. <laughs> the, 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 from the high level point of view, what, what you do with the event storm is kind of, you describe a domain or a particular process scenario, and then the hotspots and some things in the board will give you, or with the arrow voting, an indication where you want to focus. Basically, in a complex situation, you, want, you don't want to address everything at the same time. Yeah, there are some things that are more important than others to address. You decide which ones to address first. And this is also in a situation where you model a new product for a startup, you know. This is how the thing should work, yeah? Okay, this is what we want to go. How do we get there now? Well, let's have a look at where we can start here, yeah? Okay, and then start from that particular point. Basically, don't try to do everything at the same time, which is a general advice, yeah? So this is basically what you do, yeah? Right, right. thank you. How are we going with the time, Karan? Yep, we're ready. So we should start. Okay.
Uh, okay, let's give that. Uh, that is uh, visiting visionary. I don't know the name that that is still writing. Uh, what disliked. So let's wait until this person finishes, and then maybe we can we can have a quick conversation. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, I think in the, we can just take another two minutes. Uh, uh, yeah. If anyone has any questions, we uh, in the time, okay. yes, we can, we can take those. Also, we've got six minutes to to the end. So maybe we can, Karan, what do you think? We can go to where the tickets and then if there are questions, people can ask in the meantime. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I think let's, uh, let's start with what we disliked. Uh, yeah, this, the first one is what was there to dislike. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But this one is interesting about the color sticky references. So actually, that, I agree with that complication. I myself, when, when I go with more than three colors, have a problem. One thing that I suggest is also because there are also color blind, blind people that may have serious trouble with the different colors is you can also put markers on the notes in terms of, you know, an A for an act or a C for a command, something like this. It's not that it has to be an A or a C, but symbols, yeah, that people can understand. So the color, whoever understands color will be fine, but whoever doesn't will be fine as well. That, that's a suggestion that I give. Anything to add, Karan Dipti? Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, the colors were generally, uh, the, the origin of these colors was because uh, they, they, would, they would match the actual sticky notes in, in practice. These are the kind of colors that sticky notes come in, uh, but there is no rule to it. Uh, so as you said, I think that's a good, good idea. We could, you, we could very well put uh, acronyms on top and use it yeah. that way. I think so. Yeah, that's because the, the colors is a common problem. Yeah. <laughs> and okay, so let's see if there is any anything say good insight, inputs from all, which are exactly the, the, the purpose of this. Having stakeholders together, great cap capture. And then so I think all the things we discussed seem to be things that people liked. Now I've got a question for you. So we've got a few minutes. Are you going to use it at work? Do, are you going to give it a go? Do you think you want to try that? Who wants to answer this? You know, who wants to answer except from Karan and Dipti, of course, yeah. Except me also, I just already shared that I'm going to uh, use it next week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Anybody else? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I definitely plan to do as well. I got, I already have some ideas kicking in. Yeah, of course, uh, what uh, we recommend uh, we recommend is also to look at the references because today, you know, due to time constraints, we couldn't go in depth in all the concepts. There are some other concepts like the aggregate or pivotal event or other things that couldn't be uh, discussed today. But I think uh, our view is that what you've got here is sufficient for you to get started in a good way. Yeah. So we, we all the, already with the, the things you, you know today, you can go a long way with modeling lots of your domains and processes. Yeah. Yeah. And just to add to that, uh, what we've also experienced in the past is that uh, this has uh, also turned out to be a great exercise to discover ideas. So it's not always necessary that you need to use this to model technical designs. You could also use it for just thinking about business processes in general. Uh, we've often had situations where we've worked with uh, people, uh, clients, partners who, who really found this useful to understand how they should run their business. So that was uh, a great revelation. So uh, even before getting into any kind of implementation, product implementation. Yeah, I think the, another point that I would like to add is, I think, uh, uh, like what Karan mentioned, that they have identified like how they should run their business. I think they've also identified sometimes like the major gaps that their current business process had. And they actually, uh, like during the event storming session, they actually got various ideas also that how they could improve it. Because from point A to point B, like everything was in their mind. But when they were putting the stickies, it actually became a lot clearer for them also. That these are the gaps in, our, in their business processes as well. So yeah, I think, yeah, after like the full event storm workshops, like there are definitely some really interesting uh, outputs 
and definitely some really interesting insights for the business stakeholders and for the technical teams they definitely come out so yeah it's really like interesting to be part of these workshops um one of the things that i feel i could use it is uh, you know and i've mentioned it also maybe to explore on how maybe value stream mapping or process mapping could be done where i think um karan and deepthi had mentioned that there are certain terminologies which are different for different people uh, but through this exercise we could come on the same uh, because different stakeholders might have different definition of the same process or uh, work items so that also through this exercise it will help to get everybody on the same page yeah as well yeah I agree. So that's definitely the case. I work on systems with banks where they had, even in the database, four or six different representations of time. Now, very different. So you can imagine what happens when you do that. Or they call the same thing like transaction, contract, deal, and you know, four or five terms for exactly the same thing. These things reflected in the software itself, which meant maintaining the code was a hell. Yeah, because it was very difficult to understand every time what, what you are touching. Yeah. Great. Okay, I think time is up now. Yes. Just waiting for it. Uh, that brings us to the end. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Karan. Thank you, Diti. Thank you, uh, Giovanni. We've had an amazing session. There, uh, there were a lot of insights, takeaways. Um, we could hear from the participants and all of you participants. You were an amazing bunch of participants with the. Uh, lot of live interaction and engagement thank you very much thank, thank you. you thank you so much